If children are not safe in Damascus or Baghdad, they will not be safe in Rome or New York. That is the meaning of interdependence. Interdependence went from abstraction to concrete reality, from an idea to a set of personal relationships, from a theory to an actual network of organizations. And that's one of the great strengths of Interdependence Day, that it actually makes real the theoretical connections that we talk about when we use that term interdependence. In Rome this year, we brought together political leaders like Howard Dean of the United States, former Prime Minister Michel Rocard of France, former President Dreyfus of Switzerland, uh, former Slovenian President Milan Kucham. This is Ivor Gitlis, the extraordinary Master legendary Bish. violinist. This is Biku Perec. Just a moment. Lord Perec. Hi, hello. This is Sasha Goldman. Hello. Hello. It's terrible. Nice to meet you. Are you from India? Keep an eye on this man because he is full of mischief. We are looking to create a spirit of optimistic collaboration and working together that allows citizens, NGOs, and groups and individual nations to begin to think about how they might work together across borders to meet the problems that threaten them from across borders. Noi abbiamo nelle scuole romane bambini di 147 nazionalità diverse e io lo ritengo una ricchezza, una meravigliosa ricchezza. Penso che tutti noi siamo migliori da questo incontro, da questo incrocio di esperienze, di linguaggi, di culture. Penso che il mondo che costruiremo dovrà essere capace di tenere insieme la pluralità religiosa con la condivisione dei principi e dei diritti fondamentali della democrazia e della libertà. If we want real globalization, we have to finish the job, globalize the rights of the environmental community and globalize the rights of people who work all over the world, not just through labor unions in Europe and in the United States. We have to globalize the rights of individuals who work in third world countries to join labor unions and free association that are not run by governments and that allow people to be empowered. The reality is we cannot wait for politicians or for politics for interdependence to work. That is our job, not theirs. Interdependence starts not with the politicians, but with citizens. There are some people who have such an enormous amount of power that other people are rendered voiceless. And therefore, the question is, how are they going to make themselves heard? So this raises two questions. One can't simply say, bring in nonviolence. One needs to address the question at two levels. First of all, how can we make sure that the voiceless have a voice? How do we design international institutions in such a way that people in all these parts of the world who feel neglected, who feel desperate, who feel that they must resort to desperate measures in order to do this? And let us not forget this whole business of suicide bomb, hijack and so on did not happen until 30 years ago. The Secretary General of the United Nations has asked me to convey to you the following message. Today, no nation or group of nations, not even the most powerful, can protect itself from threats by turning itself into an impregnable military fortress. No army can prevent capital movements, stop the spread of AIDS, reduce the impact of global warming, halt the flow of information, or reverse the spread of radical, violent ideologies which threaten us all. For good or ill, we live in an age of interdependence, and we must manage it collectively. Mais je suppose que, dans le cadre de, du réseau de la lutte pour l'interdépendance, il faut poser le problème. Le plus grave, c'est que je ne suis pas sûr que nous soyons respectables, nous les Occidentaux, aux yeux de tout bon musulman. Je ne parle pas des assassins, je parle de tous les autres, un petit milliard. 
dans une société dont la valeur et la référence principale et le paradigme organisateur unique s'appelle le profit. Interdependence, in its real context, it isn't only that we all are bound to live together, it is that living together is a plan that should be made to work, not just accept that globalization is there, but make of it something that we can work for so that there is more justice in this world. I think it's very important to have uh, an international commitment of citizens and here in, the, in this room you, you find citizens willing to be active on local, national level but also on international level. Countries today are not independent at all because we are all one global uh, world and uh, uh, we need each other as humans in order to, to, to make uh, the world much better living. Either we live together or we will die alone. Just Artists have been crossing frontiers for thousands of years, and though the arts in some ways are deeply rooted in particular cultures, the imaginative instinct, the creative impulse, uh, knows no boundaries, and artists are natural champions of interdependence. In Rome, we had the violinist, the Israeli-French violinist, Ivri Gitlis, we had Martin Best, the great English guitarist and lutenist. We had uh, Leah Kreutzer, the American choreographer. We had a group of poets that included Salah Masala, uh, the uh, Arab poet from Jerusalem, who writes poetry in both Hebrew uh, and, uh, and in, in Arabic. We had uh, a wonderful group of singers that Fauzi Scali from the Fez Sacred Music Festival uh, brought to us, who uh, are Christian, Muslim, and Jewish. And uh, we had the great uh, African-American poet-performer, Sonia Sanchez, who again wrote a magnificent poem called Interdependence. Our beginnings are always in our mouth, the cycles of death. Birth learn as a child continue to offer the same face to the sky. Perhaps life is the sand on which our footprints harden, our footprints have circled ice, rain, blood, mud of ponderous minds. Our footprints have come to the 21st century enlarged by old and new sightings. We, born in the 20th century, now move ancestrally in the 21st century. Our footprints beneficent with work and style, love and grace and spirit. Love. We hope within the next couple of years, Interdependence Day will become a global celebration in which millions of people in thousands of different places find their own way to celebrate and their own way to generate civic engagement across borders and transnational forms of civic activity to create a world in which terrorism will be memorialized on September 11th, but no longer be an issue on September 12th.